which replaced the Babylonians. For the Jews, speaking Aramaic caused a problem in their religious life because the common Israelite could no longer understand the language of scripture. When they were allowed to return to their homeland under the Persian ruler Cyrus, this language problem may have been the challenge that Nehemiah and Ezra were striving to overcome in 455 BC. The Levites read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. A new resource was developed in the synagogue to alleviate this problem. Translators stood by the podium of the priest while he read the word of the law in Hebrew. These translators, or turgmen, would then interpret the Hebrew into Aramaic for the people. This was not done word for word, but it was a narrative translation. Imagine a person translating what you were speaking from English into Spanish or French in real time. Your translator would then need to summarize and reframe concepts and language to make sense to the listener. So what he just said is what happened after the after the diaspora, it's called, and the Aramaic Palestinian Targums in Genesis, which is what that would have been, the Hebrew to the Aramaic. But instead of having a human translator, which would have had to like put it into pictorial text so you could understand the people could understand what the guy was saying. This is word for word translation, and it says that and I could read it for you right now, but I don't have the book in front of me, but basically it says that the angel Samael is the one who tempted Eve and Eve desired the angel Samael. And that's where we get Cain from. And that's why all the genealogies for Christ had to be so strict because they were showing you that Jesus came from the line of Seth because Cain killed Abel. And that is what the wheat and the tares is actually about. The wheat is the, the righteous person like Abel and the tares are like Cain because they, when they're full grown, they look the same, but they're not the same in spirit. But back then it was in physicality. And so we've all intermingled since then. So now it's like a spiritual thing, but there is an actual line of Cain on this earth. And these people can transform because Satan was a seraphic angel. And even in Jude, it says certain men crept in unaware. So you have people like the pastor David Jeremiah who is on stage and he's actually transforming on stage and you can see him glitch out and there's certain people that crept in unawares that are in politics and different things like that and even certain high ranking so called pastors that now have Hollywood stars on Hollywood Boulevard those people have all crept into the church unawares of the people and and Jesus knew this was going to happen because he's the alpha and the omega so what happened is he let himself be crucified in a human form to show us what would happen to the word of God which is an eternal thing just like him and his word they crucified it so they took all the different books that they didn't like like the gospel of Nicodemus and Nicodemus was one of the only people that stood up for Jesus out of the Sanhedrin and the um, the Pharisees, basically. He was one of the only ones that stood up for Jesus. And Jesus told him in the night, which is a metaphor for the night, this dark age of wickedness, He Jesus told Nicodemus how to become born again. And Nicodemus is like, how could somebody go back into their mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus is like, how can you be like the leader of the Jewish people and not know something like this? And we call ourselves born again Christians based on that conversation. So Nicodemus was one of the only people that was on Jesus' side. He actually buried Jesus. He took him down off the cross with Joseph of Arimathea and properly buried Jesus and put him in Nicodemus. I mean uh, Joseph of Arimathea's uh, unused tomb and properly like put ointments on him and stuff like that. So he did a lot of stuff for Jesus, but we took the entire gospel that he has, which is also called the Acts of Pilate because it's a historical document. That is both Pilate's like written testimony, like his diary basically, and then it's also Nicodemus's eyewitness testimony. And it's the story of when Jesus was in the tomb for three days and he went down to the underworld and saved all the saints who had ever died because like Jesus hadn't come to die for everybody's sins yet. So during that time, all the people went into this highest point of hell called Abraham's bosom, right at the gates of hell, the gates of brass. And, and David talks about Jesus coming to destroy the gates of brass, and Isaiah talks about it. And Jesus went to the underworld, 
and he broke those gates and he set all of the people free that had ever died from Adam to the thief on the cross. The only two people that this didn't happen for was Enoch and Elijah because they're the two witnesses because Peter said that every man lives once and then the judgment. So they have to come back and then they're going to live a life and they're going to be killed by the Antichrist after they do battle with him in Israel. And I don't know if everybody realizes, but most troops that are U.S. troops have just been called to active duty to go to Israel for at least one year right now. And there's a group of 70 nations that are part of the United Nations that are headquartered in the United States, which is Mystery Babylon, and we are going to go to Israel to fight against Israel. Now, obviously there are people that are Christians and people that are saints and love Jesus Christ that live in Mystery Babylon, just like Daniel was in regular Babylon, and he was taken prisoner, and he had to be in exile and be under Nebuchadnezzar's rule for like 70 years until he could go back to the land. And that's what this is talking about, the same thing that happened back then, where they didn't know the language anymore. They didn't really know who they were anymore. And then they have to be taught all that stuff. Well, this is the secret that Jesus is talking about. These dark sayings that Jesus is talking about in the Nagamati Codices and the things that were dug up in 1949, the Dead Sea Scrolls and stuff that Jesus is telling you. These dark things that haven't been told to the people of God since the beginning of time because they forgot about it because Peter and Jude are like, I want to bring you to remembrance of these things. I want to bring you to remembrance of these things. You need to remember that Jesus, he made his life a living example of what would happen to the word. So in the Gospel of Thomas, which most people say isn't a good book, but it matches all the things in the canon and it has sayings in it that are hard to understand. So he, the disciples said to Jesus, what is the end going to be like? Because most people like us are always like, oh, what's the end going to be like? Because we're living in the end. So we're like, How, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And so just like it says in Enoch, my, this book isn't for this generation, but a, a remote one that'll be living in the days when the wicked and ungodly will be removed. Well, there's still wicked and ungodly people on this earth. So it's about this time where Enoch is like, you can read Enoch right here, right now on YouTube. You can listen to it as many times as you want. It was reserved for this time so that you can find out that the fallen angels did all this stuff to humankind and their progeny, their kids are the ones ruling the Vatican, ruling the earth, ruling everything in this world. And it's the line of Cain because Satan is part of the fallen angels and he had a child with Eve and then that's what it is. Like their line is ruling this earth. So they are the tares that will be removed. They will be burned and the wheat will be stored in Jesus's barn. And it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into if you believe the rapture and all that stuff. What I'm saying is that Jesus said that if you, when the disciples asked him in the gospel of Thomas, how is the end going to be he said do you know the beginning that you're asking about the end and in the beginning it says in this according to this the aramaic from the hebrew to aramaic not before king james got a hold of it see it says right there right there how we got the bible ancient manuscripts to the king james there was a traveling time where there was what happened with the hebrew and the aramaic and then what happened with the King James Bible? 1611 had Apocrypha in it, which means hidden. And Jesus said in Revelation, To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. The hidden manna is the stuff they took out. All the hidden books. <clears throat> and so right now, you can go on YouTube and read the Super Gospel, which has a hundred different books that are put back together, where all the miracles Jesus did, well, some of them, most of them, are written down so you can find out that he healed people of witchcraft he healed people of all these different things jesus was doing miracles he could talk when he was born and he's talking when he's three telling you that titus and dumicus the two thieves on the cross are going to be hanging next to him on the cross in 30 years and the thief on the cross actually saved mary and joseph and jesus so he did it works and he had faith so it's works and faith so like a lot of people are like oh it's just a thief on the cross believe and no there's other things he did that they took out so whatever but what I'm saying is that if you want to know the end, know the beginning. Because in the beginning, as it is in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, there's fallen angels and giants on the earth. In the end, there's going to be giants on the earth. Because it says in the book of the bee, there's going to be a worldwide Muslim invasion, which is happening at our southern border. And the European nations are getting invaded by Muslims. That is being allowed to happen because of the sexual immorality of the people in this world. And it's not just, you don't, you could say, oh, it's just, no, 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 that's not possible. Well, what's happening with T.D. Jakes? What's happening with all these people that are supposed pastors, supposed shepherds of the people? And they are currently 
like being found out to be sexually immoral people. And th- never mind the fact that there's people in the congregations that are doing that same exact stuff that are being sexually immoral. And they're not repenting of it. They're not like they did it one day and the next day they're like, oh, I'm really sorry. I want to change my life. No, they're not even trying to repent. They just keep living it. It says that a, a son and a father will go and sleep with the same exact woman. And that's happening all the time. It's rampant. It's happening everywhere. And this is the punishment of that, is that Muslims are going to take over the United States, which is Mystery Babylon. And their leader is the Mahdi, the guy that's on the Fez hat, the the Muslim Antichrist, which is Obama, who's really running the puppet, the Muppet, that is Biden. He's not even probably human. If you look at his face, it's not even the same ears, not even the same chin, not even the same eyes as the same person as before. And they've been cloning people since 1930 using a swab from the back of your throat, if that sounds familiar. So what I'm saying to you is that Jesus said, in order to understand all of the parables of the Bible, you need to understand the parable of the wheat and the tares. And he asked the angels, he said to the angels, he said, he said to the angels, when they said, should we tear up, should we tear up these tares and take them away? He said, no, let them grow together until the end. So Jesus is the one that's allowing them to grow together with us until the end for his purposes so that righteousness and evil could grow together until the end. So at the end, when there's a judgment, you can say, well, what did those, what did Cain's line do? What did, what did Adam's line do? Let me see the difference between the two peoples. And he can show everybody, this is what my people did. This is what your people did. And there might be a few line from the line of Cain that did the right thing. But for the most part, the progeny of the devil they are inclined to do evil all the days of their life, and it's very hard for them to repent and change. But Jesus stretched out his arms to both Titus and Dumachus, and it was up to them to choose if they wanted to choose Christ or not. That's the difference. And there are currently female supposed prophets on TikTok and YouTube all over the place saying that this is not true, that Cain is not the son of Eve. But when jo- in the Super Gospel, if you read it, Joseph says, and this is the super gospel if you don't know what it looks like, this is the actual book, and it has over 100 different texts that are all combined so that you can get the full picture of what actually happened to Jesus, and I'll show you the table of contents real quick. Over all those different books added back into the word of God because he is no longer hanging on a cross, he has risen from the dead because we got these books dug up this past century when Israel became a nation in 1948. They were dug up in 1949. So that's the fig tree prophecy. That means that we will not be having any more generations in the world after this one. That's it. This is the end game. This is the end. And Basically, Jesus said that this is going to be the greatest harvest that has ever been and that like a certain grape cluster will say, no, pick me, pick me. It's talking about people. It's talking about a harvest of people, of souls, because everybody's going to figure this stuff out. But during the same time, there's going to be a lot of deception out there. And even people saying that they're prophets and stuff, teaching you stuff that's not true. Because Jesus himself said the most important thing is to understand the, the wheat and the tares and that whole entire thought process of what that could mean. Because if you understand that, then you can understand all of the metaphoric language of all the other ways that he taught people. And he said he's only going to teach you in parables because people are like blind in their eyes because they're not using, they're not putting their two eyes together, their spiritual and the physical eye to create one eye. They're not do, taking their physical and their spiritual ears and creating one. They're just listening with like both separately he wants you to listen with both of them and understand this is a spiritual thing he made himself to be crucified as a man so you could understand what he was doing in the spirit and what he did throughout these 2000 years that were given over to the pigs the the demons that were cast into the pigs that fell off the cliff that's a, that was a time cue so you can realize that Jesus allowed this to happen to his word and everybody's like oh he would keep his word sacred he would keep his word sacred no he allowed that to happen just like in the in the desert when he was tested by the devil and the devil said, take these two stones, the two testaments, and make them into bread, something edible now. He said, no, man doesn't live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Well, every word would be the apocrypha that was hidden. Or it would be the pseudopigrapha, stuff that they call fake, but it's not fake. They call it pseudopigrapha because just like it says in Peter and Jude, 
is saying that people speak evil of dignities. They speak evil of these things that are not evil. Just like these so-called prophetess, prophetesses that say that they are speaking of all these bad people in the world and they know these things about people. It's obvious that Obama's the Antichrist. It's obvious that T.D. Jakes isn't a good pastor. It's obvious Joel Austin isn't a good pastor. You don't have to be a genius to figure that out. You don't have to have you know, a prophetic utterance to figure out that these people are evil and wicked. They're on boats with George Clooney with little Chinese kids. So anyways, what I'm saying is that there are things in the King James Bible that have been mistranslated, and it doesn't mean that the whole thing is. It just means certain things are. And if you want to know the truth of it, the truth is out there. You just need to knock on the door and find out and ask Jesus if it's true or not. And if you're not ready for that kind of stuff, then you're not ready for it. But Jesus said that in Second Ezra, which is an apocryphal book, that certain books are for the wise and certain books are for the unwise. So it just depends if you're wise or not. If you are ready to listen to that stuff. Because the armor of God analogy that Paul got, he got that from the Wisdom of Solomon, which is an apocryphal book. So if you are given the hidden manna, the apocrypha, Read it and understand that that's what Ezra was talking about when he was told by God that you should don't like some of these books are for them and some of them aren't. And that's what Jesus was talking about in the Gospel of Thomas when he says, 20, they said 24 elders spoke, um, spoke in Israel and they were speaking of you. And Jesus said, You're speaking of the dead when the living one is right in front of you. What he's saying is that the 24 elders, which is how many people wrote the canon. Which, if you look at the history of it, most of the books they don't even know who wrote them, but of the ones they know who wrote them, 24 elders are the ones that wrote them. That he's saying that the canon is a dead concept, just like he told the devil, man doesn't live on these two stones, he lives on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's the same concept. The two stones are the 66 book canon, and Jesus knew that would happen. That's why he let himself be crucified to show what would happen to it. Just like he let himself be taken, he let the word be taken. And that's why he said at Gethsemane, he's like, take this cup from me. He wasn't just talking about his body being crucified. He was, he was, Jesus is a strong dude. He's a man. He wasn't like even that scared about it. He was just scared. Like he was like upset that they were going to do that to his word, which is an everlasting thing. Cause he is the words that come out of the mouth of Yahuwah. So can you imagine like being an eternal being and they're going to take your word and do something to it for that amount, even two days, even two, 2000 years, they're going to do that to it. But they did it even before that because they did it since Adam. They've been trying to hide these books. There's ancient apocrypha. There's Old Testament apocrypha because Enoch is ancient. And that's what it says in Jude, which is the half, half brother of Jesus, that he said that they speak evil of dignities. Peter and Jude together, if you put it together, that's what it says. They speak evil of these dignities that and and. And Enoch was a prophet. So if Enoch was a prophet that was seventh from Adam, and there's also Enoch Cain's son, who was an evil person and a witch, that's not who we're talking about. We're talking about the one seventh from Adam, and he was a wise and holy person, and he ruled the earth because they asked him to because he was so wise. And even when Noah was born, Lamech went to Enoch and he asked him, is this, like, is my son messed up? Is he a fallen angel or something? Like, did I screw up somewhere? Why did he ask him that? He said, because that, <laughs> that's what happened to Eve. He's like saying, well, why is my son look, have like light beams coming out of his eyes? And why is he all white? And he looks like an albino basically. And his, his lips are red and stuff. He said, why is that happening? He's like, no, don't worry about it. Your son's going to be the one that saves the world because him and his sons are going to repopulate the earth. So don't be afraid of it, that it was meant to happen. And so he had to go to Enoch to ask him that. So these people that run the religious institutions right now are calling somebody that 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 was told that told Lamech how Noah was going to be the one to save the world. These people speak evil of him, and he had 365 books, and we only have four of them right now. And most people only accept the first one, and there's three more after that that tell you way more stuff than any scholar could tell you about the Bible and Jesus's throne and God's throne and the crowns that were given and all this other stuff. But they speak evil of dignity. So what do you expect them to do? They speak evil of Paul because they don't understand Paul's teachings. Because they don't understand the epistle of Barnabas, which, which was also taken out. And it tells you about the food laws. Tells you what the Sabbath really is. And Jesus is quoted in that book. So if Jesus is quoted in the epistle of Barnabas. And he's talking very fervently at his people. And, and we don't accept that book. We don't accept Jesus. That's what you're saying. You don't accept Jesus Christ. Because he's more than a man. He's the word of God. 
And you don't have the option to choose which ones you like and which ones you don't like. It's just a fact. So I just wanted to explain that using this little thing that I just found because I was like looking at like something that could like explain really quickly how they came up with the Aramaic Targums and within four minutes of this two hour long introduction of where we got the King James Bible from, they tell you about the fact that it was translated from Hebrew to Aramaic and that in that book, if you own that book, it says clearly in Genesis that Eve desired the angel Samael. And then in the Gospel of Philip, which was dug up in Qumran, Philip says first came adultery and then murder. So if adultery came first before murder, that means that Cain is not the son of Adam. And they mistranslated it in the canon that came from the King James Version because they did it on purpose. Do you think that they actually want you to know? Do you think that they want you to know that they have an entire bloodline? It would take away all of their power. And what do you see happening right now? The king of England just gave his power over to his son, who many think is the cloned image of Christ that they took from the Shroud of Turin. And um, Dr. Joyce Jeffrey Pugh has an entire book about that. And if you're good at drawing, you can just take an image of Prince William's face and put it over like what they describe Jesus' face as, and it looks exactly like him. So, anyways, just wanted to explain a few things. I hope that makes sense. A lot of it, I could back it up with scripture and put it right in your face right now. But, like, whatever you have questions on, ask me. I'll put it in the comments. I'll put it in, you know, another video or something and explain where it came from. You can buy the book yourself. I'll tell you where to buy it. But everything I just said, I've read it in the word myself. Everything I just said, I've read it in the word myself. And if people in the religious institutions don't believe this way, that's not my fault. That's just the way that they've been taught by the people that taught them in the cemetery. That's not my fault. So we need to wake up. There's a lot more important things in the world besides like the social media crap going on and the wars going on. These are all things that were prophesied to happen. Let's not worry about all that stuff. Get get your family and your house in order and be prepared for the war. But there's a spiritual war going on and it has to do with Jesus' word rising from the dead. And it's alive right now. So go find it. God bless. Take care.